Corduroy. Corduroy is a bear who once lived in the toy department of a big store. Day after day, he waited with all the other animals and dolls for somebody to come along and take him home. The store was always filled with shoppers buying all sorts of things. But no one ever seemed to want a small bear in green overalls. Then, one morning, a little girl stopped and looked straight into Corduroy's bright eyes. Oh, mommy, she said. Look, there's the very bear I've always wanted. Not today, dear, her mother sighed. I've spent too much already. Besides, he doesn't look new. He's lost the button to one of his shoulder straps. Corduroy watched them sadly as they walked away. I didn't know I lost a button, he said to himself. Tonight, I'll go see if I can find it. Late that evening, when all the shoppers had gone and the doors were shut and locked, Corduroy climbed carefully down from his shelf and began searching everywhere on the floor for his lost button. Suddenly, he felt the floor moving under him. Quite by accident, he had stepped onto the escalator and up he went. Could this be a mountain? He wondered. I think I've always wanted to climb a mountain. He stepped off the escalator as it reached the next floor. And there before his eyes was the most amazing sight. Wow. Tables and chairs and lamps and sofas and rows and rows of beds. This must be a palace, Corduroy gasped. I guess I've always wanted to live in a palace. He wandered around admiring the furniture. This must be a bed, he said. I've always wanted to sleep in a bed. And up he crawled onto the large, thick mattress. All at once, he saw something small and round. Why, here's my button, he cried. And he tried to pick it up, but like all the other buttons on the mattress, it was tied down tight. He yanked and pulled with both paws until pop! Off came the button and off the mattress corduroy toppled. Bang into a tall floor lamp. Over it fell with a crash. Corduroy didn't know it, but there was someone else awake in the store. The night watchman was going his rounds on the floor above. When he heard the crash, he came dashing down the escalator. Hey, who's there? Now who in the world did that? He exclaimed. Oh. Somebody must be hiding around here. He flashed his light under and over sofas and beds until he came to the biggest bed of all. And there, he saw two fuzzy brown ears sticking up from under the cover. Hello, he said. How did you get upstairs? The night watchman tucked Corduroy under his arm and carried him down the escalator and set him on the shelf in the toy department with the other animals and dolls. Corduroy was just waking up when the first customers came into the store in the morning. And there, looking at him with a wide, warm smile, was the same little girl he'd seen only the day before. I'm Lisa, she said, and you're going to be my very own bear. Last night, I counted what I saved in my piggy bank, 
and my mother said I could bring you home. Shall I put him in a box for you? The sales lady asked. Oh, no thank you, Lisa answered, and she carried Corduroy home in her arms. She ran all the way up four flights of stairs into her family's apartment and straight into her own room. Corduroy blinked. There was a chair and a chest of drawers and alongside a girl-sized bed stood a little bed just the right size for him. The room was small, nothing like that enormous palace in the department store. This must be home, he said. I know I've always wanted a home. Lisa sat down with Corduroy on her lap and began to sew a button on his overalls. I like you the way you are, she said, but you'll be more comfortable with your shoulder strap fastened. said Corduroy. I've always wanted a friend. Me too, said Lisa, and gave him a big hug. So now we're going to add an ending to our story using improvisation. Improvisation is when you are acting without a script and you are making up what to say, you're making up what to do, but you're doing it in character. For this ending, I'm going to ask Corduroy what game he wants to play and I'm going to teach it to him. This is going to require a lot of imagination on your part. Here we go. All right, Corduroy, so your button is all fastened up and you're good to go. What do you want to play? Hide and seek. All right, that's a really fun game. Have you ever played it before? No, never. No problem, I will teach it to you. First thing you have to do to play hide and seek is you have to cover your eyes and you have to count. We're gonna count to 10. I don't know how to count. I never went to school. I will teach you. To count, you go like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Give it a try. One, two, three, four. I forgot. <laughs> it's okay, Corduroy. We're gonna keep practicing until you get it. Here we go. Listen to me first and then you try it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Go for it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ABC. <laughs> <laughs> You're almost there. We're gonna keep trying until you get it and then we'll move on to the next part of the game. So I would keep going until I finished teaching Corduroy the game and that ends the activity. Now it is your turn to give it a try. Find a teddy bear or a toy at home that could pretend to be Corduroy or better yet, ask someone in your family to be Corduroy and teach them a game. I chose hide and seek, but you can choose any game that you want tag, patty cake, basketball, whatever you like, and teach Corduroy a game. Use your imagination, be creative, see what you come up with. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the story and happy playmaking.